Gentleman from Georgia. I ask to recognize for up to four minutes and followed by Senator Shaheen. Is there objection? Without objection, the Senator from uh, Georgia is recognized. Mr. President, I'm very pleased to announce today that the biennial budget pr proposal introduced by Senators Isaacson and Shaheen has been dropped. There are 21 co-sponsors, 15 Republicans, six Democrats, and one independent, and the number is growing as we speak. Senator Shaheen and I started this initiative two years ago. It received 68 votes and a test vote on the budget in 2013. We believe it will receive the necessary votes to become the law of the land of the United States of America. And you might ask, why a biennial budget? Well, you might ask yourself, why an $18 trillion de debt? And why have hundreds of billions of dollars in deficit? We don't have the oversight necessary of the spending that we do now to keep us from wasting money. It's time we ran our country like you'd run your home. It's time we held our agencies accountable. It's time our appropriations weren't just idle promises, but our oversight was the rule of law in the United States Senate. Mr. President, 20 states in the United States out of 50 have biennial budgets. Countries around the world have biennial budgets. This Congress, three years ago under the threat of a shutdown, did a biennial budget for the Veterans Administration just to ensure we wouldn't have a break in funding if the government shut down. Predictability of funding of government is critical, but the oversight of that funding is more critical. What about a, just picture this, Mr. President. You get elected in an even-numbered year, the year 2014. Your first order of business in 2015 is to pass a two-year Appropriations Act and a two-year budget. But then in the even-numbered year that comes up when you're running for re-election, your job is not spending, your job is oversight. Wouldn't it be nice instead of going home and promising you're bringing home the bacon to get reelected, instead you're bringing home the savings to see to it the taxpayers' money is better spent? The biennial budget is an idea whose time has come, and it's the only way we're going to be able to measurably and sustainably reduce deficits and reduce the debt in the United States of America and hold our spending more accountable. Just last night on the floor of the United States House of Representatives, the Clay Bill was passed on suicide prevention, a new program in the VA, and the, the, the funding mechanism was existing funds and fungibility. We already know there's existing money in the appropriations to our agencies to pay for new ideas if we charge them to go find them. Some of the things we've been funding for 40 or 50 years probably don't need to be done anymore, and some of the things we're not doing probably need to be done. But the way to do it is not to spend more money or throw more money at the problem. The way to do it is to do it the way the American taxpayers do back home. Sit around the kitchen table, set their priorities, make their funding predictable, and from time to time, go back and look at where they're spending the money, see if they can improve it. This is an idea that will make America great. Senator Shaheen is a former governor of the state of New Hampshire. She had a biennial budget process in her state, and I'd like to yield to her to describe her co-sponsorship of this bill. Um, thank you very much to my colleague, Senator Isaacson. I'm pleased to join him on the floor today as we reintroduce the bipartisan legislation, the Biennial Budgeting and Appropriations Act. And, and I want to start by recognizing the good work of Senator Isaacson because he started working on this issue when he came to the Senate in 2005. And he's introduced this legislation in every Congress since then. I've been pleased to be able to join him in the last two Congresses. And I think we really have an opportunity in this Congress to pass this common sense bipartisan reform. And as he pointed out, there is no question that the budget process in Washington is broken. Since 1980, there have been only two budgets that have been finished on time according to the process. In that time frame, Congress has resorted to more than 150 short-term funding bills or continuing resolutions. And we all remember what it was like when the government shut down in October of 2013. It cost the economy $24 billion. It hurt small businesses. It hurt people across this country. That is no way to govern. And while we have made significant progress to reduce deficits in recent years, we need a new way of doing business in Washington. Biennial budgeting won't fix everything, but as Senator Isaacson said, it's an important reform that will allow us to work across the aisle not only to make more sense of the budget process, but to be better stewards of taxpayer dollars. And we know that biennial budgeting works. I can attest to that very personally, <coughs> coming from the state of New Hampshire, where we have a biennial budget. Um, I served three terms as governor. We were able, in each of those bienniums, to pass a budget that was balanced, that allowed us to get the budget done in the first year, of the election cycle and in the second year to be able to have oversight. 
It worked in New Hampshire, it works in 20 states around the country, and it can work in Washington. Biennial budgeting offers a better process that encourages us to work together, to pass budgets on time, and to use taxpayer dollars more efficiently. As Senator Isaacson says, in the first year, Congress and federal agencies would put together a two-year budget. In the second year, Congress would have time to conduct oversight, to give agencies the ability to focus on achieving their missions. You know, as we all know, there are regular reports from the Government Accountability Office, GAO, that identify areas of waste, a fraud of duplicative programs within government. Um, for example, they've identified ways to reform the farm programs, to cut down on inefficiencies in defense, to reduce fraud in health programs. But the current budget process doesn't really provide an effective mechanism to regularly review GAO's recommendations. Under biennial budgeting, we would be able to take a close look at those recommendations to implement savings in the second year to figure out how we can more effectively provide um, programs to the American people and eliminate those that don't work and support those that do. As we've said, in 2013, we had a very strong vote um, with 68 senators voting to endorse the concept of biennial budgeting. It was a very strong bipartisan vote. A similar biennial budget bill passed the House Budget Committee last year with a bipartisan vote. So it's clear that momentum is growing for this concept because people understand we've got to do something to reform our budget process. The bill that we're introducing today has 22 bipartisan co-sponsors. I know that we're both working to get more bipartisan sponsors on the bill, and we think we have a great shot with support from this body to pass biennial budgeting. We think there is support in the House to do that, and I look forward to working with Senator Isaacson and my colleagues here in the Senate to get this done. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I thank the Senator for her support and urge our other members of the United States Senate to join us in this reform effort for the spending of the taxpayer's dollar. And I